It's your boy, the one Joey V. This is Boss Dog Cigars. This is Quentin Moore chilling in the Cigar Lounge. Have a drink with your boys and tune in. Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cigar Lounge Podcast. I am your local hero. I'm here with my special guest um, from Hook Cigars. Um, I remember, um, so interesting story. I got your cigar, my man, a uh, badass cigar. Um, he uh, popped up on me. He was like, oh, you had a hook? And I was like, no, I never had a hook before. I keep seeing everybody talking about it. I see you, Joey, you know, Cody, y'all all talking about it. I'm like, they don't have them down here. He's like, here, try it. And he gave me one. I tried it. I'm like, oh, this shit is good. Oh, man, we go, go to Jersey or something to get one of these. <laughs> you know? I really, that's good, I really enjoyed it. So that's how I got my hand on your cigar. So let's get... I got to send you I, I gotta send you some more with uh, when Badass comes back down here. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He always. I'll definitely up. take care. I'll definitely take care of you, man. All right. Well, let's get into let's get into your journey. Uh, hold on, here All go. Right. Hopefully, my okay. Now it's working. Now it wants to work. <laughs> it had to work. Right. Now. Yeah, there go. <laughs> oh, Lady ass co-host right there. Yeah, go ahead and say your shit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Run it through. Say your shit. Hey, y'all know who it is. AKA B one. AKA the Alton. Bring your problems to me. Do your shit there. All right, so back into the interview. <laughs> Let's get into how you got into cigars. Um, about 20 years ago, I started uh, smoking. Um, my brother introduced me to cigar smoking. And um, I used to smoke just one type of cigar. I didn't know what, you know, I would hear people talk about the cigar. I, I would hear people talking about flavors, talking about retro hail, talking about pepper, hay, grass, dirt, you know, all these flavors that come out of the smoke. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, how the hell do these guys get this? What the fuck? I mean, how do they do this? And, you know, it took me. And mind you, I would I would retro hail. I would be, you know, I would retro hail from 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 day one. And I still didn't understand what they were saying. So um, one day it took me about, I guess, 15 years, between 12, 15 years. So it can actually, to, for it to actually click. Huh? And when I started picking up the notes, I would <coughs> say, oh my God, this is amazing. Now I understand. Now I can see the difference between Nicaragua, between Dominican, this cigar, this type mm -hmm. of, of tobacco. So I went to Dominican Republic. I met up with a friend of mine. And, and, you know, I was telling him, hey, listen, you know, I want to get into the business. How do you do this? And he pointed me out to, to a blender, to a master blender. And from there on, it's just the rest is history. You know, I started blending. I started making a lot of, you know, when you start in this business, um, you tend to make a lot of mistakes because you tend to think that something is good or something is to your taste. And after the product is finished, then it's a different product. You know, you don't take into account that, um, you know, you have to let it age, you know, before, you know, you can actually appreciate the, the end result. So, you know, about 20 years ago, but in reality, in between those 20 years, I have five, six years that I'm really learning and appreciate more, you know, what, what, I, what I smoke or when I smoke. Yeah. Now, yeah. If, you could, if you had any advice for your younger self mm -hmm. and getting into this business or somebody who wants to get into this business, what advice would you give them that you that you might not have heard when you first got in? Mm. This uh the business itself, yeah. it's a tricky business. Uh lots of hypocrisy, lots of backstabbing. Um Mm -hmm. Lots of, you know, oh, I'm going to make a cigar and you think it's easy. Well, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, in the industry, uh, chances are you're not going to get the help that you think you're going to get um, just because people don't want competition. Mm -hmm. um, and little by little, you learn. Um, People don't tend to say, hey, you know, it went sour for me. It went bad for me. I did this and it went bad. I don't know. Everything you hear is I did good. I did good. I did good. I did good. And, and you know, I messed up here. No, you're not going to hear that. 
because it's, you know, they, they just won't allow that to happen. Um, so if you're going to get into industry, make sure you know what you want. Um, make sure you ask questions, not the correct questions, the questions that interest you, the questions that are going to get you to discover what you have to discover. You know, you, you will find somebody that that that's going to tell you, hey, listen, don't go down this route or don't go down this route because this, this, this and this happened to me. And at the end of the day, you're still going to do it just because human nature. Mm -hmm. But as you progress, as you move forward, you got to realize, hey, you know, this person was right. This person was right. But never be afraid to ask a question because that's going to show you who who truly wants to help, who truly wants to see you move forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Uh, not right now. <laughs> he's late and he doesn't have any questions. What's up with that, bro? Where you smoking a cigarette? <laughs> yes, I am. Why the fuck? Are you, you know what? I don't even want to know why you're using two hands. That's going to lead to something else. This is, that's a plausible moment. You know what? Pause that whole thought as a plausible moment. All right. So, uh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> get back to you and your cigars, right? Now, like I said, I, I've had it from badass. Uh, he's actually he swears about that damn cigar, and that's a cigar. It. Badass is a yo. So Mark smokes at least at least seven to eight cigars a day. Yeah, <laughs> this is a smoking motherfucker. We went to CI, and I was wondering if CI had enough cigars for this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes that's how I be, you know. Yo, when he when he tells me a cigar is good, I like I gotta go with this man's this man's word. It's, it's, it's valid. And he was like, "Yo, this cigar right here, this cigar." He's like, "Whatever I'm in, fanatics or something, I, I gotta get these cigars right here." I was like, "Damn, they ain't that's got nowhere." To get. That's like, good, man. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one. I was like, "Okay, cool." And I was like, "This motherfucker good. You gotta get down here to Maryland, man. You gotta get your product into my market. I gotta I gotta be able to get them." All right, now, that's what's up. You have it where people can order online. Just fanatics for now. Um, so now so, it out? Uh, yeah, fanatics ships it out. So, okay. um, if you do order through fanatics, just make sure you let me know. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, 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 I'm gonna place an order, uh, like mm -hmm. a day before. That way, you know, I can send you, you know, some extras, you mm -hmm. know, so I can send you from the Mexican blend, so I can send you from the Ecuadorian blend. And mm -hmm. I can send you for my first original blend that I have maybe, you know, a couple left. You know, I have a okay. few left, but, you know, I'm not selling those anymore. You know, that way you get a nice package of what I have. You and your brother, okay. you know, even okay. though he's smoking a cigarette and doesn't want to ask any questions and I, shit. But, I know, right? you know, I still sell some shit. <laughs> and, it's, and it's dark where he at. It's real shadowy, man. No, you know, I don't know what's going on. With the, I don't know what's going on with the lighting because, you know, we were on live and my lighting was fine. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same exact spot <laughs> with the yeah. same exact button, but for some reason. Now you like a fucking uh, evildoer or something over there. Here it's not uh it, it's not as bright. Like so I, I don't know what the hell's going on with my phone right But you're like a fucking super villain. Um uh, <laughs> <laughs> say hello to the bad guy. So so let me ask you this question, right? Okay. So how like how do you make these these connections? Like so, to get into the lounges, right? Do you mm -hmm. do you do it yourself? You got sales reps, or how do you? How do oh you, uh, no 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 no! I go by myself. Okay. Um, as a starter, you know, if you're starting, it's good to have a plan of how you're gonna do things. I don't have mm -hmm. a plan. I'm just I'm doing it. I love this. I love my mm -hmm. cigars. I like smoking. I like talking about cigars. So. One of the things, one of the most important things when you go to a lounge or when you meet somebody is your mm. personality, your attitude. Um, mm. You know, if there is a positive attitude, if there is, if you tell me no, then, hey, it's okay. I respect your opinion. I respect that. I respect your no. And mm. just keep moving. Don't let that turn you down. Um, but yeah, I, I would just go to lounges and then it'll be word of mouth. Hey, can you help me out? Do you know another lounge that I can go to so for the most part if the product is good say one of the owners like the cigars you can ask him and he'll say hey you know what i know a friend of mine and 
maybe you can go over here, right? Um, if he has doubts, right, he might say, hey, come back again, you know, or, or leave, you know, leave a, send me a bundle and, you know, I'll let you know next time what I think. And that's usually what happens. You know, the first time, it, 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 you know, one of the first things you have to do is you got to call the lounge. Just don't show up to an Don't be that asshole that shows up to the lounge. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I learned that the hard way. It's, you know, what, what are you doing here? Get out. They, they didn't tell me to get out, but in a way, they, they weren't giving me, giving me the time. So just make sure you call. Hey, how are you? Can I show up? I, you know, I'm so-and-so. I have this product. I would like to introduce it to you. Is it okay if I show up? Yes, yes. When? You name the time and, you know, I'll be there. Um, that and that's very important because you're you're catering to them, you know, in the long run. So that's so, that's pretty much it. I was like, I, I do actually have a question. Mm-hmm. What do you think was the hardest part about getting started for you? The hardest part. <sighs> the hardest part. What was the hardest part for me? The hardest part was taking the first step. That's it. Because, uh, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to go with this master blender. And I have to sit down with him and I have to discuss what I like, what tobacco I want to use in the blend, how I want to use it. All right. Let me just pray and hope this all comes down, you know, how I want it. They're just right. having that doubt, you know, that, that creates a lot of anxiety. And then, so, you know, if I'm listening. Oh, no, I was going to say, so kind of like getting, getting over yourself, like getting past your own, your own self doubts is like, yes, to actually yes. get it going. Yeah, we yes, appreciate because it, Dr. Phil. It, what was that? I was talking uh-huh. to Dr. Phil down here. I will, no, what was you about to say? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, um, because you can, anybody can say, hey, I want to make a, but there's a lot of effort into it. Like, mm-hmm. as far as emotional, um, there's a lot, you know. You can come down to me and, and we can sit down, we can discuss cigars, we can talk cigars, and, you know, I can easily sell your story for another. So you have to put your trust in somebody. In this case, you know, it would be the master blender because he knows the tobaccos to select. He knows what he's going to make. You just have to agree with him that that's what you're looking for as far as a production goes. So, you know, that's pretty much it. You got to let the man work. Now, how hard is it for you to choose? Let's say, now now you you got a couple plans, but let's say your very first, how hard was it to choose your very first blend because I know they send you a couple a couple samples based off of what you said what you say you like no, you know very first wh- when I was in uh, I, w- I actually went to Dominican Republic so when I was out there um, I drove my master blender crazy you could ask him I drove him crazy crazy to the point where he said you know what I'm not I'm not working with you anymore because I, me, I didn't have that knowledge. I didn't have that experience. So I was looking for that perfect cigar. Like this has to be like this, like this. And my master blender is telling me, bro, you got to relax. You're not making a cigar for yourself. You're making something for the general public. Understand that, right? So you let me do my job as a master blender. You do your job to continue to learn what you smoke. So that, that was me. I was just being a pain in the ass. So what happened then was when I came back, I got together with a friend and he told me, uh, he told me pretty much the same thing that the blender told me. He said, look, when you go to a kitchen or you go to a restaurant and you order some food, you say you want a food a certain way, right? Whose job is that? It's the chef's job, right? So you let that right. master blender do his job. If he tells you that the tobacco goes like this, like this, like this, and like that, you let him do it like that because he knows more than you and he has more experience than you. So he told me that and that kind of sunk in. I went back and I said, hey, whatever you say goes, 
And he's like, what do you want? I said, this is what I want. X, Y, Z. He came down. I smoked. I said, this is what's going. And this wasn't a matter of, you know, 30 minutes, an hour between smoking and discussing the cigars and, and, you know, um, defining the profile of the product. I said, you know what, this is it. And I'm staying shut. I'm letting you work, you know, but it, it, that helps me because it allows me to put myself in my place. Hey, I'm not a master blender. I'm just a smoker. These guys do this for, for, for a living. I think they know what they're talking about, right? So let me let them work and let me learn a little bit from them as far as the tobacco, as far as the taste, as far as quality goes. Let me learn a little bit more. So I've been learning from there on. You know what? You ate the first um, cigar. Um, we, we've talked to a lot of cigar producers, cigar makers, and they've all said the same thing. We've had a couple that said, I don't even like my best seller. Uh-huh. Uh, I just brought it out to some people who I trust their their um their palate. They tasted it, they mm-hmm. loved it, and it's been selling. But have you get do you have a cigar like that? I ain't gonna say that you don't, but you're not. You're like, how is this selling? I'm not a big fan of this. You ever blend like that? Uh, you know what? I have. I only have two blends now in the market. Okay. And from the two blends, I think they're pretty good, but I believe that I can do better and not me doing better because remember i'm not a master blender i just know what cigars i like i just know what tobaccos i like and i bring the idea to the blender and say hey this is what i like let's work and you make it happen and we go on from there um the blends are good i for i I, so right now i'm smoking the 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 question mark i I don't have the band but i've been smoking it so Go ahead. I had the bl- the blue one. Which one's the blue one? Damn, that's fucked up. I don't have a plan. <laughs> I got it down. It sounds like that's some fucked up shit. Um, no, there's one that has two bands. One that has. Oh, here go right here. Matter of fact, here you go right here. Damn, I was supposed to do that. Okay, that's so that's the hook. That's right? the, okay. So okay, right, so, I thought, so I thought I thought it was the cocaine. So it's still the so, cocaine. Okay, so this is flagship. Right. So then what you do is there, there's another one with the same band and a second band, secondary band. That's the Ecuadorian. And then okay. the first one that doesn't have the second band, it they came out at the same time. Just a different blend. So there's one that uses Ecuadorian tobacco. And the other one that doesn't have the second band is the Mexican. Okay. Uh, with the wrapper is Mexican and it, it, it's Dominican binder and filler. Okay. So, you know, I've been smoking the Ecuadorian one lately that i'm just like what the fuck and i recently i just remember that i have some some mexican so i broke out a pack and i'm just gonna smoke them you know just to remember what the product was but yes they, I, there are some they, yeah I do. that happens that's normal if they told you that yeah that's normal mm-hmm. you know it's like somebody tells you that they're not afraid to get shot at or they're not afraid to go to war and 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 not get killed they're bullshitting you. So yeah, there, there there is a blend that that doesn't really hit me, you know, but it just yeah. gives me it it just gives me more food to fucking make something better, you know. Yeah, right. I was gonna ask. So, is there any type of uh, that you could tell us? Uh, mm-hmm. Is there any type of like special blends that you would like to have, or something that you would like to work on? Like, Something crazy that nobody's ever tried. I think I think I, I think um, that as far as special blends, I think it's just a word when you say special, right? Because you have so much, um, so much variety of tobacco that you can use to create what you want. And say, hey, this is a, this is my special blend. It's it's you know that's uh, I don't know that's just too open for me. Would I want to do something? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that kind of that that takes time because now I have to go. I have to take a trip to the Dominican Republic. I have to work. I have to, you know, I have to see my options. I have to see, do they have the tobacco? You know, do they have the tobacco to make the amount that needs to be made? You know, is it something that, you know, what do you think? Because when it, say I say, hey, I'm, I'm making something special, 
right? And when right. I make that special that I'm in love with that cigar, you guys smoke and you're like, ah, I like the other one better. <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah. and that's that's common. Uh, you know what? I like the first one better just because it gave me that kick and this one. And, and to be honest, it's lack of understanding, you know, lack of knowledge in my opinion. You need to understand more of the tobacco. You need to understand more of the blend. And people don't want to hear that. People don't want to get that, that education. So I, you know, I respect that. And, you know, I keep moving. You know, so it'll, I'll probably come out with something special sometime this year, God willing. Okay, cool. I'll wait for that. But in the meantime, I'll keep it under the under my pillow. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we, we'll be waiting for it. So here's another I, question. For gotcha. you. Now, what do you Go pair? Ahead. What do you pair with your cigars? So as far as pairing goes, I, I need more education uh, as far as, hey, let me pair. I am a tequila drinker. Okay. So, you know, I like to sip on tequila. Uh, um, and that's it. Uh, the only thing that I have been able to pair a cigar with, uh, it's black coffee and coffee with milk. Black coffee, no sugar. And, for example, um, if I'm smoking a Nicaragua tobacco, um, I can have some black coffee and I know that I'm going to open up that, that, uh, flavor profile of the cigar just because I'm pairing it with the coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, if the cigar is too peppery or if it's too aggressive in the palate and the throat, then I'm going to add a little bit of milk on the, on the coffee just so I can balance it out. That's as far as I've gotten to pairing. Um, but usually it's, I'm just drinking coffee, cleaning my palate and I'm smoking a cigar. Because there's a there's a moment where you're having a drink, you're enjoying a drink, and your nose and your palate goes numb just because of the alcohol. So it's mm -hmm. hard to you know say, hey, I can't, I can't taste the cigar anymore. Now I'm tasting the alcohol more. So I need more education as far as pairing. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So. Okay, yeah. So when it comes to your so, like I said, I, I enjoyed the uh, the hook. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to try the other ones. Uh, and thank you, of course, for being on. Mm -hmm. And like so, no, thank you for having everybody I talk to that does cigars, but the mm -hmm. boutique, all the boutiques I talk to, the boutique brands. What I like about you guys, you seem more accessible, right? Like, mm -hmm. so like I've, I've I've had Carlito on my live. I talked to Carlito, but you know he's a busy person. But it's like a lot of it, it's not easy to get the bigger brands and that's what I like about boutique and I like the I like the experimental things that you guys do like what I find with a lot right. of the bigger brands is they they go by they, they ride the wave right so if everybody doing the the, the, the Maduros you know that they want to let's make something like that not quite that but something like that you know I, I find that they do that a lot um, how do you keep from being uh, uh, put into that box no, you have to like when there's a trend, you have to follow the trend. Okay. Um, you have to follow the trend because say the big guys are doing it. Well, guess what? You're going to do it, but with a little bit more quality. Not, not that I'm saying that they don't have quality, but you're just going to put a little bit of an extra effort into making that cigar stands out, stand out. Okay. Uh, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago. I think the, the, there was a big trend with Mexican San Andres uh, as a rapper, and that was flying. I mean, everybody was flying Mexican San Andres. Um, and then this year, I think, or the last year was the Corojo, the Corojo rappers. Um, and that was another trend that was just trending a lot. Um, for Mexican San Andres, that is a tough, that is a tough, uh, that is a tough tobacco to work with mm -hmm. just because it's very expensive. But if you're able to make it, then it happens. You know, you, you consider yourself lucky, you know. Um, but to keep myself out of the box, no, I stay in the box. There's a new the trend. I, let's, let's, yeah, absolutely. Let's work. What do you have? What's coming out? What's the new, what's the new trend now? Uh, Habano? Okay, let's find Habano. Let's see what these guys are doing. Let's smoke. Let's try it. And then you say, hmm, okay, 
mm, I don't like it or I like this, I like that. There's certain companies that I like and I respect a lot because of their quality and how they work. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so that tells me, okay, let's work with Habano and let's see what we can make out of a Habano. If I like it and if I agree, then, you know, we'll push it out. You know, but remember, I only have two blends out. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is something that I'm telling you without pretty much uh, 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 experience, right? Yeah. Just because of the blends that I have. So I can't tell you, oh, yeah, I'll go with the, I'll definitely, I'm telling you now, I'll definitely go with with the flow. But, you know, when that, when that time comes that I'm telling you that I'm pushing out more product, more blends and, you know, different stuff, then, you know, we can have this conversation again. And see how it goes. <laughs> now I will. I will. Uh, now let me ask you this question. I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. Go ahead. We're gonna, we're gonna take you out of it. What five cigar companies would be your everyday smoke? You only have these five cigar companies. Who would you go with? I like uh, La Galera. I like that's the Bacalera Palma. Um, there's another one. It's a it's a boutique. It's hard to find. I'll send you a few if they have a fanatics as well. So what I'll do is when you order, I'm gonna send you two of everything so you can send to your brother as well. Okay. With the uh, with the other boutique company, uh, the master blender. His name is Chico Rivas, Francisco Rivas. He does those Jotas. He does Vivaldi. Um, those cigars I like. That's number two right there. Um, number three. Oh, a Camacho, but the old Camacho. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, number three would be, um, I'm confused, Aladino. Yeah. Nasty Ali Aladino. J-R-E. J-R-E. That's the company. So JRE, they use Honduran tobacco. Um, that the man that used to blend or still blends the JREs was the original blender of the, the Camachos. So I like that originality. Um, a little bit pricey, but to me, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Placencia with the uh, Qatar edition and with uh, Year of the Rapid, those two cigars. Phenomenal. For not mm -hmm. Davidoff, I was a big fan of Davidoff, but I fell off the bus. I'm not, you know, I'm not. Yeah. Um, there's certain cigars from Davidoff that I can smoke that are still, you know, the way they are. Um, and that's it. So maybe three companies, if you ask okay. me. I'm, see, I'm very picky. That's the, Yeah, I'm very picky. <laughs> you know, I'm very picky. Like, we could sit down, we could look through a human, I could tell you, yeah, I'll smoke that. Or oh, yeah, I'll smoke that. Or yeah, I'll smoke this and that. La Aurora, underrated cigar. They have certain cigars that I would pick out, and I say these are hands down one of the best cigars that I've had, you know, from La Aurora. Um, you know, I can, you know, I can say something about other cups. Uh, Tatuaje. Uh, Tatuaje, I fell in love with the Broadleaf. Back in 2013 or 14, when they came out with the, with the Jason for the Halloween, yeah. Oh my God, I couldn't stop smoking that cigar. That was a phenomenal smoke. And they have great product. You yeah. know, they have good tobacco, they have good blends, um, you know, and he has a great fan base. So that's something that I respect. And he's a very humble individual. So those are things that I respect from 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 these own, uh, from the owners. Um, but that's it. Those are my three companies, man. You have uh, the Chico, you have... Uh, La Galera and well not even Davidoff Davidoff would be like certain cigars I'll be selected okay. for the cigars and Fuente maybe two or three from them yeah so how many yeah. times have you smoked the cigar and be like hey my shit better <laughs> do I find, don't like to do, do that do you find yourself preparing that's what I meant to say do you find uh, yourself because you, you you're not chefs be like I would have did this I think I think I could do this a little better um uh, no because here's the thing. I started a couple of years ago. These guys have ages working tobacco. Mm -hmm. 
So I can't come out and say, ah, you know, I could have done this better. All right. Mm-hmm. If I were if I were to sit down with a blender or one of these owners and I say, hey, I could have done this better. Well, tell me, you know, I'm going to look like an ass because, mm-hmm. all right, what tobacco would you use? Uh, I don't know. You know, how would you use, what type of cut would you use on this? What type of filler or how much filler would you use on this? How much of this leaf would you? And no. And on top of that, on every cigar, whether I like it or not, somebody else is going to like it. And somebody else is going to disagree that I like that cigar. So I, I, you know, yes, I smoke really shitty cigars where I say I'm not smoking this anymore. But at the same time, I have to respect because there was an effort put into it. There were emotions put into making that cigar. And there was a dream behind that product, whether it was to make money or whether it was to, you know, live the moment. That That's all an effort that, that was put into making that product. So I have to respect that. You know, yeah. um, that's, I don't, I don't like to compare. Now other companies like this company and this company, yes. But myself comparing to other, no, I don't think that's mm-hmm. right. That, that's just me. Mm-hmm. You know. So where did you get your name? Where do you get the name The Hook from? Where do you get The Hook from? <laughs> the Hook, that is all symbolic. Um, the man fishing, the bucket, uh, the man resting, it, that is all symbolic. The Hook is just a tool that we use um, to bring food to our house. See the okay. man brings fish. Right. I like that. Well, he uses a hook to fish. Whatever tool you use in life to, what you use to bring, to bring food to the family, to to survive, to, you know, make things happen. And that's your tool. In this case, it just happened to be a hook for the man that brings the fish to the house to provide food for the family. So it's just symbolic. It doesn't have to do it. I don't know shit about fishing, you know, but it's it's more of more of symbolic. It's more symbolic, you know? Okay. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I was trying to interesting how people come up with the names of uh, cigar companies. You know, there's always always found that interesting. If, if they don't use their name, like if it's something outside of their name, like, well, how did you come up with that? How did you? And there's always an interesting <laughs> story behind how they come up with the names. Yeah, that's it. You know, you got to work, you got to produce, but at the same time, if you see if in the ring. In the image, you see that he's resting. He's resting on top of the hook. He's he's resting on his tool because the bucket is full of fish. Now it's time for him to rest. And how does he rest? He smokes a cigar because that's what relaxes him. That's what brings him joy. So on top of his, on top of his hook, he smokes a cigar and just relaxes. You know, get ready for tomorrow's battle. Okay. Yeah. See now, okay. Now see now, I'm looking at the Okay. I, and I'm just noticing that too. <laughs> I see that you got the fishing pole and everything. Okay, yeah. Okay. This some dope artwork too, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Then that's another thing. Like how, like finding the logo. Now, did you run through a bunch of them, or you already had in your head like mm-hmm. this is kind of what I want to do? I, yes. So I had in my head. So so if you want to create something you have to realize that you already want to create something. So whatever it is that you want to create it, it's, it's already in your head. You just have to look for it in your head within yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, what are you feeling? What is telling you? Like say you're focusing your energy on, on creating a logo. Okay. Why are you focusing? What, what's the purpose of what I'm going to create? Right. Then once you find that, it's just going to pop up. I just wanted to find a guy just fishing and bringing in that food for, for the family. Cause you know, I'm trying to make them, I'm trying to make a living, not just selling cigars, but on my regular job as well. I'm trying to make a living and cigars is something that I really enjoy. I really like talking about it. So, so, um, when you go through logos, you find ideas, you know, in my case, I, I like to ask God, I'm not a religious guy, but you know, I have my conversations with the man and, you know, I ask him and I say, Hey, you know, can you point me out? Can you give me an idea? Boom. You get an idea when you feel it in your heart and you're like, okay, let me capitalize on this and and let me work on this. Let me open up on this. And 
that's how you create. Well, that's how I created. You know, that's my experience with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's do uh, Yeah, no. That definitely works. Yeah. Uh, you, you got to have that conversation, you know? Yep. Sometimes you got to just, you have the idea, you just have to allow it to grow on its own. Yes. You yes. Know, you got to take shape. The, the the more the more you stress about it, the more you block yourself, and the less you see um, the end result. So it's like you said, you got to let it flow, and the hardest thing is just allowing it to flow because you think that you know time is running out, and that's that's just bullshit. You know, time doesn't run out; it's gonna appear, and it's gonna and you're gonna make it concrete when the time is right. But just when the time is right, not when you want to. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I like that. I like that. I like that. That, that, that whole story behind it. That's kind of dope. Yeah, man. So yeah. That's dope. So, again, so you 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 have you have two blends out, right? Mm-hmm. Now, just between them, like, because there's a lot of um, makers who have about three or four, but just between those those two blends that you have, right? Like I, you you said that you, you you like both of them, which is great. Like I said, there's a lot of people be like, and you know you got I know you got your favorite. It's like it's like children. Y'all and don't lie. Don't lie when y'all looking on here. You know you got your favorite child. Stop lying to you and That's that true. child. <laughs> you got your child that you know gonna make it, and you got the one that's gonna be like, uh, he gonna have to take care of that one. You know it. All right. <laughs> that's true. That's but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. But that's true, it's, it's fucked up, but it's the truth. But, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to cigars, though, so you got two plans, but how now how do you come up like just with the idea of doing them? But do you like um I know you said you, you follow the, you, you know you you, you 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 do with the trends, right? But like say say you like, okay, I want to do a new cigar. hmm And you go to your master blender. And do you already have your ideas of how you want it to kind of like taste, or do you let him just come up with something and then you be like no, okay, no, now no, 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 as opposed no. to when you first started? No, no. You have to have an idea of okay. how you want it to taste. And that comes through smoking. And not just your cigar. You smoke other cigars. You smoke from this one, you smoke from this one, you smoke from this one. And then you'll say, hmm, but wait. And this is where where, where going back to the question where you say, hey, I'll make it better. I can make it better than this guy. No, this is where you come and you say, hey, maybe I can use what this guy is using and maybe use a higher grade of tobacco and see how that comes out with different tobaccos. Um, but you have, you know, one of the things is you have to know your tobaccos. Like you have to know, you know, for example, I like Criollo 98. So Criollo 98 is a very strong tobacco. It is very flavorful. The aroma is like dry espresso. It hits the nose. It has a long finish on the nose, a long pepper finish, and it it's pretty strong that because it blocks your throat. Um, that's how much strength it has. Okay, well, you can use three cuts. You have you you have what is the ligero. You have what is the ligero is obviously what has the most nicotine, the most um, content of nicotine. You have like two types of ligero. You have a seco. You have a visto. So, okay, you go based on that. What I want to use, I, okay, I want to use the clear, but I want, what goes, what pairs with this tobacco? Does, let's say, does Piloto, Cubano, pair with this? Yes? Okay, let's pair it up. Let's use this cut and let's use this cut and let's see how it smokes and let's use this type of binder. And when let's smoke it with binder. Let's just smoke binder and filler. We're going to create this blend. And, you know, you go based off that. And it's a lot of smoking involved. When you're, say, here in the States, you tend to smoke, uh, I, I tend to smoke two, three, maybe four cigars. If I have the time to smoke the fourth one, I'll do it. When you're in, in the Dominican Republic, that you're creating a blend that you're working on something, you're smoking 10, 15, 20 cigars, you know, and, and it's not that you're smoking 10, 15, or 20 cigars. It's that you're smoking. You're continuously smoking. All right. And you're not smoking the whole cigar. You're just smoking the variety, the, the variety of the leaf. 
right? So let's blend these two leaves together. Let me see how it tastes. You'll smoke half of it. Okay, great. Let's blend this one with this one. Let's smoke it. Great. Okay, let's reduce a little bit of this and add a little bit of that. Great. Okay, now let's add a wrapper. Great. Okay, let's change the binder. Okay? And it's just, it's endless. And that's where the master blender tells you, calm down. This goes with this, 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 and that. It goes with this type of binder. It goes with this type of, of wrapper. And if you want to balance out the filler, then we just reduce this, add more of this. And, you know, you'll pinpoint it down until you know you get it to where you need it you know? right i mean like it, so it's kind of like you you're getting the cigar that you want yes and then you're making tweaks to it as you're going yes, so yes. you're, you're fine tuning what it is you already have yes get it to that point and then you have somebody that's obviously holding your hand which is the master blender you know, he's telling you, okay, look, you can't you can't do this with that because if you do this with that, it's going to come out too bitter, right? Okay. And if it comes out too bitter, then that's no good. Mm-hmm. You know. That makes sense. Okay. You know, so like you said, you have your idea, but then your master blender is the one who's kind of guiding you, letting you know, like, all right, this is what you want to do with it, but all right, that may not necessarily work. Yes. Or you know, or all right, well, you want this particular, you want this particular taste from your cigar. All right, well, instead of doing this, how about we do this? Yes. It, it might or, be a little bit. Yeah, or if you just want, if you want strength, you have to compromise on the flavor. If you want flavor, then you would have to compromise on the strength just so we can bring that flavor to where you want it to or the strength to what, to where you want it to. Okay. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just like anything else that you build. You you got to take time, work out the kinks. You know, it's, it's, it's all in your head. You're going to go in the first time and you're like, all right, you know what? This is absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, speak for yourself. It's it's good. Good. Even if it falls apart, God damn it, I did it right the first time. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you just, yeah, because sometimes you say, you, sometimes you think, and this is tricky. Sometimes you think you're like, shit, I got it right. I fucking love this smoke. This is fucking amazing. And then you'll smoke it down the road and then you'll start questioning. You're saying, oh my God, what did I do? Hmm, maybe if I do this better, maybe if I do, but it's already too late. Mm. You know, so usually you, you, you have to get it the first time. Because you know, if you see, if you get it the first time, once you get to 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 the to the end result where you say, "Hey, this is what I want. This is a go." All right, let me take a few samples. And you can't smoke those samples. You got to wait at least a month and a half before you smoke one, and then another month before you smoke two. You know, and on month two, you're smoking one every week until you hit the third month. Where in the third month. Everything comes together and the cigar is already ready to smoke. Mm-hmm. You know, you just can't smoke a cigar right off the press. I was like, I would think you would have to kind of wait because you want to see what it's going to taste like once it's had time to settle. Yes, but you get that like on the first try. Like if you're getting a cigar that's fresh, freshly rolled, right? Mm-hmm. You're, mm-hmm. you're, say you're in the factory and you get a cigar that's freshly rolled. That's what's going to give you an idea of how the cigar is going to taste at the at the three month time frame. You know, the only factors that you have to remove is obviously the humidity, and right. you know, and you know, the, if you can eliminate the humidity and you can, you know, distinguish between the flavors and taking the humidity out, then you already know what you're going to get at at three months time frame. Right now, how long does it take? from from farm to production for you? Like how long do you Ooh. get them and sit on them before you release it or do you or do they do they, you let them sit enough time where as soon as you get them you can release them or how long does it take? For no, you? For, from, from, far to, from farm to production it's a different um, it's a different process because from growth, you have to pick them, then you have to set them in a barn, you have to let them cure, and after curing, you have to bring them in the, the warehouse to give them the process, and it takes that takes like about a year. Um, and I can find that inf- I can find out that information for you 
Um, but that takes about a year in the warehouse. Um, but usually when, you know, the blender or when I go with the blender and we go and pick tobacco, that tobacco is already processed. That tobacco has already, it's aged, okay. you know? So, okay, we're looking at tobacco two, three years, maybe five years that are aged. All right, let's use this. This is ready to go. So, you know, if that that process is different, but if you're looking from... That, that's, from that's, that's what I meant then. That's what I meant then from like... From, from, oh, from roll rolling? To, yeah. So you can roll, I don't know, you can roll, say, 10, 15,000 cigars in about two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then once they're already rolled, once they're already uh, packaged, you got to let them sit. You got to let them age. Because remember, the tobacco is wet. Yeah. So you got to let them marry. Once they get married, pa, 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 you give them like three months. Three months is the rule. Uh -huh. Yeah, three months is the rule. You got a fresh tobacco, give it three months. So it can sit, so it can absorb the proper humidity, so it could dry out to the correct humidity, and so it can just blend, so it can marry together. You know, that's the rule of thumb, three months. Okay. You know, right. if, you, if you're tasting... If you're tasting ammonia and a tobacco and, you know, you think that's good, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> if you're tasting something that's super peppery in your mouth, under your tongue, in your lips, uh, in between your gums, that's not good. Um, if you're uh, retrohaling and you bring the smoke halfway through your throat um, and it bothers, you know, you have that scratchy feeling, that's not good. Because that's telling you that the tobacco needs more ferment fermentation. It needs more processing. When you smoke a tobacco, a, tobacco's not, a cigar is not supposed to bother you. It's not supposed to give you a better taste. Well, there is bitter, but bitter with balance. Bitter that changes. The bitter with complexity. Yeah, there's that type of bitter. But there's bitter that just tastes like shit. Where it dries out your mouth. It fucks up your throat. It, it um, on, the, on the retro hill, it just destroys your nose. It's, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed, that's not enjoyment. You know, you're hurting yourself. Yeah. You know, now there's cigars that you, you have that strength, but you have to learn to ba like balance the retrohale. Like you wouldn't do a uh, full 100% retrohale through the nose. You just say, you know what? I think I'm going to do, you know, 30% retro and then the rest, I'm just going to blow it out. You know, you, you do something like that. Hold on. Okay. It's all right. Leave him there, buddy. You can leave him there. I'm I'm here. It's my son with the dog. Okay. So, so yeah, you know, stuff like that. You know, okay. just th those are things. Those are things that that when when I say people don't want to get educated, for the most part, people think that uh, tobacco, just because it's super spicy and super peppery in your mouth, or super harsh in your mouth. Oh, that means it's good. That means it's a full body cigar. And, you know, I tend to stay shut and I say, yeah, you're right. Because I've had these type of arguments where they say, oh, no, this sucks. Uh, there's no balance. There's no, there's no pepperiness. I like it too. Nah, it's, it's not supposed to be like that. You know? Okay. okay. So you yeah. learn something new every day. Yeah. Every day, man. See, bro, I told you I was going to teach you something. You see, you, you, you're learning here. You're learning here. Now, put out that damn cigarette. Yeah, so, um... <laughs> I'm not smoking a cigarette. Oh, what you smoking now? Oh, uh, the LFD NAS. Mm. 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 I had to do about that's one a of classic. 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic only, right there. That's the only place that I heard that has them. Like, I had because the guy that worked at the lounge I go to, he was like, uh, yeah, I got the NAS. He said, NAS? I said, yeah. He said, where the fuck you get those from? <laughs> I like to get them in my brother now. She said, them motherfuckers ain't nowhere. We look. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a hard cigar to find. Any Flor Dominicana, is hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to find. So it sounds like B1, you need to send him one. Send him a couple. Send him a couple. <laughs> what, the, the NAS? <laughs> the NAS, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I think that's just one tobacco. Uh <laughs> Uh, that shit is nasty ass shit, like 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 she says. But that that's that's strong. that is a strong motherfucking tobacco. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a, that's that's put 
Yeah, yeah. It'll put you in your ass. And most yeah. most LFDs that I've had in my experience, I've always respected them. Because at same as Carrillo, um they you they, those they just they're just too powerful for me. Uh, I was you know, Day, actually. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was no. mad before they had about five boxes that got ruined by a flood that they had. Yikes. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. But all right, gentlemen. It has been fun having you on, sir. You guys, you guys in Maryland, how is it out there? I'm in Maryland. Uh it's nice, actually. It's yeah. like 60 something today. I was, I'm, I'm actually out of Kansas. It's only supposed to be about 50 degrees out here, but okay. it's it's still rainy and kind of windy. So, oh, six I mean, it's not it's terrible. It is. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, sir, I definitely appreciate having you on, and we definitely want to have you on again. Nah, we're here. Listen, we're here. Like I said, I'm sorry about yesterday. I just fucking had a long night. Uh, oh, no, um, but, you know, just just hit me up if you need anything. Let me know. Um, I'll definitely send you the cigars. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you get your cigars to your brother then? To be one. <laughs> just ship it out to me. All right, so send me your address. Um, and that's it. If you don't order from Fanatics, then send me your address and I'll send. Just send me your addresses and I'll send the cigars over. Just give me some time. I'll yeah. probably do it between tomorrow and next week. But I will send the cigars over to you guys. All right, no problem. Okay. Yeah, thank brother. You, sir. We appreciate that. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Oh, uh, we did too. It was a pleasure having you on. We definitely gotta have you on again. Whenever you want, my brother. Thank you again. All right, yo. Okay. If you see us on live, man, jump in. You ever see us on live? We smoke a cigar. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll do that. I'll do that from right. now and I'll do it. Okay, definitely. All right, it's been a pleasure, sir. All right, fam. All right. Yeah. All right. You too. Bye. All right. All right. I'm your local hero, man. You blow your smoke like a goddamn gentleman. We out. Peace. Peace. <laughs>